Nathan Sandra, during my research on paranormal happenings around this Situate Reservoir, I came across the own unknown pasture. It's called that because for some reason animals, when they come here, they don't like to go near it. And a washwoman sometimes comes out and appears to people and disappears before their eyes. So how far does this go back, Nathan? Does this go back to the time when farmers actually used to bring their livestock to pasture and the animals would not enter here? I guess that's when it, because how old does the washwoman go back to? Well, I think this predates the advent of the Citrate Reservoir, right? Because this is all watershed property now. Yeah. So it would have to. see no sign of the washerwoman tonight. Maybe if you were walking alone here at night you might. And most of this was pasture land anyway. Well, Grazing. I, I was reading that back in the probably the 1870s when Rhode Island was at its uh, peak agricultural usage uh, the forest cover in the state was only down to 25 percent. That means 75 percent of the land in the state was cleared of the original forest. You see a lot more forest today than you did back then. Well but, yeah this is all overgrowth you know, after the advent of the Citrate Reservoir, after this was all uh, sanctioned off as watershed property. Yeah. So this is all second growth. Yeah you can see none of the trees that are out there are more than 30 years old or so. Alright, well, let's go to our next location then. Sounds like a plan. right there. Oh, See that okay. gnarled old trunk? Yeah. Going way up to the top. A tree that old, um, back when the land was clear, it would have had branches going out in all directions. Like you see a tree growing in somebody's yard in the middle of a farm field. But since this uh, has been abandoned uh, as an agricultural field, obviously you can see all the trees around it are much younger. So what happens when a tree gets that old and has younger trees grow up around it, the younger trees start to shade out the lower branches and then the tree ends up abandoning them, they die and they eventually rot and fall off. So even though this tree is very, very old and it used to be very, very wide according to stories, um, it's now pretty much just a straight up and down tree in the middle of a much younger forest. But you can see how old it is from all the gnarls and uh, bumps where it used to have branches and hmm. Even though it doesn't look like a tree you could hang somebody from now, I'm sure a couple hundred years ago it had plenty of suitable branches. So that's the hanging tree, Nathan. What do you know about this place now that we've seen it? Uh, well, that tree is about 400 years old. And as you said, it was much bigger in its heyday. And the younger settlers into this part of Situate 
Use it as a hanging tree for people who did bad things. So behave. Okay. <laughs> yeah. One has to wonder how many victims wound up doing a spandau ballet off the branches of that tree in years past. Yeah. Exactly how many? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Countless. Countless. Given that you said people were hanged here, does anybody say anything about it being haunted? Yes, yeah, some people see forms hanging from the tree, and some people on occasion hear voices in this area. Well, it should be interesting to listen to our audio devices when we get back, see if we pick up anything ourselves. Uh, is there any documentation or any people alive today that claim to have had this experience here? I'm sure there are, but you probably have to ask around the local townsfolk to find out anything or you know, go uh, research the Citrate Library. Keith, I think you said that they have extensive information on at least the reservoir, but I can't imagine that records of hanging were, would have been purged at any time. You could probably actually go and trace back and get names of people who, who were strung up here. But probably as far could. as who's experienced it, mm -hmm. you know, just have to hit the streets and see if anybody knows any stories. True. We'll have to ask around. Sounds like a library trip would also be in order. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, what, what era we're talking about, though. I mean, obviously, pre-reservoir, but um, I mean, are we talking uh, early America, colonial, or, or what? I don't know. Well, where do you suggest we go next for our exploration? I guess next on our list is the Ponagansett Falls. Good place. What do you know about this location? <laughs> well, this is uh, the site of Ponagansett Falls. Uh, up the road there used to be a village called Bettyville, a uh, mill village that is no longer there, hasn't been there for many years. But in this area, people have reported strange phenomena such as um, the car uh, controls will suddenly go haywire, the car will shut off, they won't be able to start it suddenly almost like a magnetic pole, battery drains, compasses go haywire, and um, this has supposedly been the site of possible cult activity. All sorts of things go on here. Of course, it's a local romantic spot too, <laughs> but uh, a lot of energy around here, plus the falls. The falls gives it a lot of energy. There's a lot of power in the air. The atmosphere is actually energized. You can e even feel it. So would you attribute to the, the goings-on about here, the, uh, the paranormal happenings, uh, as being connected to the water, to the falls, and the, the energy uh, that's generated? I certainly think that's an energy source that helps generate it. I think it derives power, and that's uh, what kind of fuels the activity here, what people experience. It can be a very uh, unnerving spot when you're alone here at night, too. I wouldn't recommend anybody being alone here at night. Right. And you mentioned cult activity as well. W would you say that the, I mean, uh, sort of the chicken and the egg here, um, the, 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 the cult activity created sort of an atmosphere that's drawing in paranormal energy? Or do you think that the, uh, the cultists are drawn to this place because they know that there's energy here that they can utilize for their rituals? Uh I think it's also the seclusion of the spot. It's way out in the middle of nowhere, way out in the woods here, a uh, very rural area. So I think it's the seclusion that draws people here and um, sometimes possible cult activity too. Where better to go with, uh, they won't be discovered. I've known of some cult activity to take place here back many years ago, back in the 70s and 80s. I don't know about recently, that could still go on. So keep this 
is rather frustrating. I mean, every location that we visit in Situate and, and, and nearby is, is, is very quiet when we get there. Then we try to film, and it's just like constant traffic. And now we're live here, and this is just such an out of the way place, and usually very quiet, and no one goes here. And now we have a biker party. I'm not sure how to describe <laughs> it. Well, a gathering anyway. A gathering. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is a hopping place tonight, uh, mm -hmm. all over Situate, like Janine was saying. Uh, Something seems to be working against us filming tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it does seem that way. Very, very popular. Know what it is? We're popular. The crowds are coming to see us. I think so. <laughs> right. I think so they're we, already on us. attractive crowd. Uh, hey, well, since we're in the area, let's go stop by Barden Cemetery. Sounds like Sounds a plan. Here we are at the Barden Cemetery, Keith. What can you tell us about this place? Well, a lot of prominent people in Situate buried here. Barden is a very, very prominent name in the town of Situate. Goes back many, many years, and there are still Bardens today, of course, that populate Situate. Many famous town folk are buried here, and um, there has been reported cult activity taking place here over the years. In fact, at one time, there was an incredible amount of damage here. Stones toppled over, uh, just, just incredible damage. And there was even a reward out for the uh, information leading to the perpetrators. Uh, fortunately, this has been repaired over the years. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful cemetery, especially in the daytime. When we investigate a cemetery location, those are the cemeteries where we seem to pick up the most evidence. Yes. Um, have you yourself actually picked up anything here? Any EVP or, or any, any visual? I have not. I have not experienced anything paranormal here in this area. Yet it's reported that people do feel um, almost like a uh, time slip here. They feel um, their equilibrium is affected. They feel unbalanced, uh, almost as if they're being pulled by some magnetic force. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, cars will suddenly go haywire, electrical equipment, even compasses. Hmm. And it may have something to do with the nearby falls over here, Ponagansett Falls directly across the Barden Reservoir. But um, this is a beautiful, beautiful place at night or in the daytime. And um, I hope that kind of vandalism or cult activity never takes place here again. But Absolutely. as you can see, it is isolated, so, yeah. Yeah, not a street light in sight. <laughs> it's very dark. Yeah, it's every reason to believe that if we had somebody who was unusually sensitive here, they may be picking up on things simply because of the um, magnetic pull that people report experiencing here. Um, you know a lot about that, uh, temporal lobe epilepsy. I wonder if people are affected in that way sometimes. Well, I suppose that's possible. Um, if the EM field was strong enough. Uh, Nathan, Valerie, you, do you, um, I, you feel anything here? No, it, it seems kind of, it has like a, a dark shadows vibe, I think. But it seems like really <laughs> nice here. It. 
But as far as like that temporal, don't you have to, I think, don't you have to actually have temporal lobe epi uh, epilepsy to have an episode of it? It can't just be that if the EMFs are really high, you can have like a... a actually, uh, the, the research shows that if, if the EM field is strong enough, it will create the, oh. the, the same condition in the brain oh. as temporal lobe epilepsy. Rockland Cemetery in Clayville. Now, of course, when different sections of Situate were, they were actually raised and uh, covered over for the advent of the Situate Reservoir. A lot of the historical cemeteries had to be relocated. Many of them were, were relocated actually in this spot. Now, of course, this is the new Rockland Cemetery when the section of the Citroën village of Rockland was destroyed because of the Citroën reservoir, many of the cemeteries had to be relocated right into this area. And uh, you've been doing some reading up on that, Nathan? Yes, about 1,500 bodies were total in all the cemeteries in the villages of Citroën. People were interred on this very ground from those cemeteries. and. Even the bodies that didn't have markers were relocated here and they tried to place them the same space they did in the old cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam Turtelot, who was one of the chief engineers of the Citroën Reservoir, he reported uh, relocating some of the bodies. Uh, some of them, of course, if there were relatives still living, the law was the casket had to be open for a viewing and some of these bodies appeared perfectly intact as if they had just been buried as if they were sleeping and of course once the fresh air hit them they dissolved very very rapidly they began crumbling but uh, it was an amazing sight um, most horrific sight from what he reported now of course there's the mound up there top of the cemetery there uh, that's probably just a natural hillside, although uh, I believe there's been some speculation that that may actually be an Indian burial mound. Hmm. Did you read about that, Nate? Yes, I came across that information. And one other thing about the bodies in the cemetery, they all faced away from the mound. And that's not traditional way back when. They used to face the east. Mm-hmm. Yes, because the uh, morning is the east and the uh, second coming is believed to be coming from the east, so people would meet their maker facing the east. Um, so why, what is the significance of them facing opposite in this cemetery? That's a good I question. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because they thought the mound was sacred to early inhabitants. I have, that's the only reason I would. I'm going to take a quick trip up there the top of the mound. And at the 
these headstones are so old they just collapsed, broken apart. Some of the uh, grass has actually grown over them. Many are intact, perfectly intact, despite their age. There has been some speculation that that some who are buried here are restless because their graves have been unearthed and removed to here. However, I personally believe it's all consecrated ground. I believe the spirits here rest in peace. My personal belief. Day of the Resurrection. So Nathan, is there anything else that you can tell us about this place? Uh, some people feel it's not haunted, but others believe otherwise. And I think if it is haunted, I think the people buried here are probably not happy with the move or they're looking for familiar land or loved ones because they might be slightly confused on what happened. Right. I, I think that would apply to this basically this, this whole general area. You know, the fact that every, everything was uprooted, uh, live people. And, uh, and, and cemeteries, whole cemeteries had to be um, relocated. And I, I think all of that upheaval just uh, gave this, this whole area a strange energy and created these pockets of uh, pa paranormal abnormality. Okay, well, I think we're done here for the evening. Uh, has everybody agreed? Let's move on to our next location. Let's keep on trucking. All right. <laughs> Well put, Nathan. <laughs>
Um, hasn't been in use for many years to my knowledge. It's been abandoned for quite some time, but it is a, a historic landmark, so it's been preserved all these years. We're glad to have this here. I don't know if anybody's experienced things there, but um, would anybody like to look in the window and see what they see? Not me. <laughs> I think the windows are a little bit high. <laughs> Interesting that each entrance has its own little, um, like mud room. Hmm. Maybe that was for keep the heat in way back when. Voices of the night echoed by the winds of time. The I don't feel like he was a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been a schoolmaster of some kind. <laughs> But he didn't really like children. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's certainly been an adventure tonight. Um, and now that we've actually been to the places, I think we should do some more historic research on it. What do you say? Time Agreed? for the in-depth. Maybe a visit to the uh, Situate Public Library. I know uh, historically when these towns were obliterated, sections of the uh, town of Situate to put in the reservoir, people lost their homes that they've lived in for generation after generation and I know there was at least one suicide where somebody shot themselves rather than leave. And another one slit their throat. Mm -hmm. So at least two, two suicides that we know about so we'll do some historic research to see what we come up with. Okay. There's more okay. to the story. Until next time, good night everyone. Good night. <laughs>